Hello everybody, this is NCS, and welcome back to Let's Play Sengoku Gensokyo! Last time, we got a couple of cutscenes uh, with Aya in them, and today, we will continue doing that. Well, getting cutscenes with Aya, that is. Uh, or having a black screen. What the heck? Ah, there we go. <laughs> Why do you need to press the button to continue on a completely black screen? Oh well. Miss Kana, we have an emergency. Kana was at the elementary school, enjoying the peace and quiet of after hours. But that calmness was broken to pieces by the worried voice of Aku. It's rare to see you so distressed, Lady Aku. What's going on? Please come with me and see for yourself. Uh, hey! Alright, no need to drag me. Aku stopped trying to drag Kane along and instead started to run. Kane followed behind her, trying not to lose track of her. Which shouldn't be that difficult seeing how Aku has, like, no uh, condition whatsoever. They quickly reached the place with a large crowd of people. Over there! What's happening here? They pushed her way through. They pushed her way through? Oh well through the people to the center. They could hear voices of anger mixed with a certain familiar voice. They eventually reached the center of and found Aya and some villagers quarreling. Why you care to repeat that? As many times as you like, you weak humans will only be a burden on a superior yokai like myself. I do not need assistance from any of you. How dare you insult us like that? I'm in this army as a result of a fair trade that benefits both sides. I'm not obligated to care about what humans think. And don't you think you all being angry at my opinion is, is meaningless without actions to back it up? Do any of you think you can match my speed? Ugh. Oh, I'm not hearing any responses. See? Just me alone is enough. That's how it's been. This has clearly gone much too far. Hearing a few lines of this argument was more than enough to figure out why Aki was so worried. With a large sigh, Kana stepped up and stood firmly between the two parties. What do you all think you're doing? Kindly stop at once! Ah, Miss Kana! Please listen, this yokai has been badmouthing us over and over! It's not badmouthing, I'm simply stating the facts! Don't bother, I can tell already what's going on. Kana waved the villager away, grimacing. Whether she thought the matter was annoying or not, she did her best not to outward outwardly display it. Let's start with you. Kana swiveled towards Aya. Aya looked as proud and haughty as ever, full of self-confidence and belief that all she said was true. Reasons and objectives aside, It'll be a huge problem if you cannot cooperate with everyone involved in this event. We humans will only be a burden to me. Let me fight alone and my effectiveness, as well as our chance of winning, will increase tremendously. Ah, um, Maya, you do know that if all people are ganging up on you in a turn-based RPG, you will lose. Yeah. In this case, numbers are far better than speed. Just saying, since there is no dodging in this game. Which kind of is a shame, really. Although I hate missing, so it's probably for the best. That Birdo has been like that the whole time, Lady Kana. She just keeps going on and on as she likes about how we're weak and useless. You do not address a lady so rudely, thank you very much. A crow sat on Aya's shoulder, presumably being her familiar. It crowed at the villager, as if cheering at them. Damn it, even the crow is making fun of us! I know already, so quit it! Kana quickly held the two villagers back, not wanting the fight to restart. But what could be done here? As she mulled over what to do, Aya made an interesting proposal. If you do not understand through words, then perhaps actions would be better. If the pen does not work, then let us move on to the sword. What do you mean? Let's play a game of tag! What? Aya's words caught Kane off guard. 
that all she and the villagers could do was blurt out a surprised response. Aya ignored all of them and continued with her proposal. I take great speed. Uh, I take great pride in my speed. <laughs> I take great speed in my pride? What? <laughs> I am the fastest in Kinsoku after all. I will not accept the thought of any of you laying a finger on me. If a miracle happens and I am being caught, I will be quiet and do as I'm told. But otherwise, I will continue to do as I please. Of course you pick a game that you have the biggest advantage in. That's natural in the world of battles. Well, she does have a point there. Of course, I wouldn't lose to a human in any battle, but this will be more peaceful than a Demaco battle or a fist fight. Well, in the fist fight, Kata could easily do you win, but... Oh well. Hmm. Well, that is reasonable, but... You can refuse if you wish, of course. But I will treat it as a no contest victory on my end. Aya's constant provocation, combined with most of the villagers being quite passionate, led to the villagers wanting to accept her challenge. They would not take her words lying down. <laughs> Let's do this. We'll show you. Yeah. As long as Miss Canis agrees to it. Hmm. Fine, as long as both parties agree to it, I'll allow it. But I want no future trouble regardless of who wins or loses. She's right. You all will need to be obedient and listen to me. You think you've won already? You'll pay for that! I have only one rule. Neither side are allowed to leave the village for the duration of the game. Is that acceptable? Understood. Let's begin! Aya immediately took to the skies as the words came out of her mouth. She then sped downwards to hover right above the ground. The villagers tried to give chase, but she would fly upwards when they got close. Hmm, flying in the skies feels so good! Come down here, you! Whoops! A villager was about to grab her ankle, but a swift flight upwards easily dodged the attempt. Why you? Such simple tactics won't work on me. Especially not if you announce your presence like that. <laughs> you, must, you must be like a ninja. Be quiet. And that attack, backstab, or whatever. Wait, backstabbing is more like a thief, but... <clears throat> Another villager tried to sneak up behind her, but she easily slipped away just as he was about to pounce. Wait, damn it! What kind of yokai would wait just because he told you to? Yet another villager tried to chase after Aya at full speed, but Aya simply left him in her dust. The gap between the abilities of the two sides was evident. It was like a battle between a man and a baby. So who's the baby then? <laughs> oh dear, this is not much of a contest at all. It's quite worrying, but there isn't much we can do. It was true that Aya was important to their war effort, but all the cons she also brought with her made that practically meaningless. The proud crow tango would normally never cooperate with mere humans. And this is getting boring. You're all just wasting your time, you know. <sighs> Shut up! Fifteen minutes had passed. Not a single one of the villagers were able to catch Aya. But since no one said how long this game would be lasting, uh, yeah, you know, at some point in time, Aya will have to come down and then uh, they'll tag you, you know, Aya? Kind of a dumb idea, not to set a timer, but okay. <laughs> there were many curious onlookers at first, but they quickly lost interest, and only Kane and Aki remained. Well, I suppose this was expected. No human can match a crow's tango's speed. But at this rate, Aki was worried that if this added up as complete victory for Aya, she would no longer listen to orders and act completely of her own accord. The villagers would not be amused, and the foundations of co cooperation and understanding between humans and yokai would crumble away. At the very least, Aki wanted to avoid that outcome. Gee, no matter how hard you try, it's useless! Aya flew off into the distance in an instant, leaving her words behind. As Aya's figure shrunk smaller and smaller, the villagers similarly lost their willpower and energy to chase after her. How 
far up into the sky is the village still considered the village anyway? You know, I would just uh, disqualify Aya for leaving the village right now. And so it ends. Just when Kane and the villagers were about to give up, Aki unexpectedly opened her mouth. Um, Miss Kane, may I lend my assistance? Hm? Ah, uh, that shouldn't be a problem, but forgive my impoliteness, but I don't think you can do anything to help at this point. What Kane had said seemed all too true, but Aki answered with a worry-free smile. I believe we spoke about this matter before. The difference between victory and defeat is knowledge. So just leave this to me. Excuse me, everyone. As a plan began to form in Akio's mind, she called the surprised villagers over and gave each and every one of them a specific set of instructions to follow. I have. So everyone will. I see. Will we really be able to pull that off, though? I do not know. And we will never know if we do not try. I will be right back, Miss Kana. With those words, the people that Akio instructed went off into different directions. Akio herself ran off to somewhere unknown as well. Ah, uh, how boring. You all wouldn't be even be able to beat a newborn baby tanga like this. Aya was floating at the sky over the edge of the village, idly grumbling. The thought of humans possibly beating her never crossed her mind, but she expected them to put up a much better fight. Perhaps I should have talked with Mizaki from the beginning and avoided all the silly nonsense. Aya started talking to a crow familiar, gnashing on her stomach. The crow replied with a cry, but it then started flapping its wings furiously. Huh? What's wrong? Ah, hey, wait! The crow ignored Aya's orders and shot like an arrow to its target. Aya chased after it and discovered a glittering light on the ground that had caught its attention. As the crow approached the light, the closely following Aya identified it glass fragments and a ball made of glass, presumably a children's toy. The crow happily picked them up with its beak and played with them. No, no, don't be so greedy, you'll embarrass me! I don't remember these things being here, though. Ah! No! Aya realized something was odd and tried to grab the crow and return to the sky, but a net was already falling from overhead. The crow's feet and wings became entangled as it cried pitifully. Ah, gee! You deal with that yourself! There! Aya gave up on saving the crow and was about to take to the skies again, when another net was thrown at her. She just barely dodged it and was trying to regain her composure when... How do you like this? Wait! Gah! A third net was thrown right after. Aya could not escape it, and her ankle became entwined around the net as they both fell to the ground. She hurriedly tried to free her ankle, but someone grabbed her from behind. There, caught you! Victory is ours! <laughs> that was quite a battle! The villagers surrounding Aya erupted in cheers and shouts of joy as Kane and Aki declared their victory. And why don't these men have eyes anyway? Creepy! <laughs> but Aya was still unable to accept the defeat and started to protest loudly. This kind of sneak attack is unfair, it's so sly! A loss is a loss, take a defeat with grace. I'm glad they didn't do uh, what they did with Yoni, whoa. Humans are evil indeed. <laughs> I did not lose, no one was able to catch up to me. Get over yourself. Well, it may, it may well be true that individually, humans are no match to you. But that is only the case in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Aww, but you see, no matter how strong you are, if the enemy has numbers and brains on their side, you will be exposed like just now. Power alone means nothing. Aww, okay, okay, fine, I am lost. 
So now, you shall fight alongside the villagers without any complaints, understood? Understood! The proud crow tank can never go back on a promise. Aya managed to force the words out. The surrounding villagers went wild at her admission of defeat. Aya could not go against them any longer. So she instead directed her anger at the crow still caught in the net. But in, in the picture it's shown that Kana's carrying it. Not even the picture can get the story right. <laughs> you stupid crow! How could you fall for such a simple trick? And how could that stupid crow tango fall for that for such a stupid trick too? I mean, you chased after your crow. I'm going to sell you to the grilled chicken stand. Oh, that's not nice. Poor crow. Dear me, I have to admit though that was quite a plan, Lady Aku. Yes, I asked everyone to look for items that reflected light to act as a lure. It is the nature of a crow to be attracted to light, after all. Good thing doesn't just want to fly straight to the sun, ouch, that would be bad. <laughs> it would be nice if she learned from this experience. The villagers, Aku, and even Kana would have no chance of winning in a direct one-on-one -on -one fight against Aya. But that is why allies and knowledge exist. Without both of those, Aya would not have been caught. Yokai were generally loners who preferred to work alone. To Kana, Humans being the exact opposite was what made them wonderful. What? I... How? What? Ah, <laughs> uh, you just spent a whole day chasing after I. How hard do you have the time to counterattack your village? <laughs> oh well. Um... Yeah, let's just not do anything here. Because, well, I neither have the manpower nor the time to actually do another battle. That cutscene was long. And get used to long or many cutscenes that will all in all take a long time <laughs> to finish. <laughs> Once we have beaten the human village... <sighs> I'm dreading that moment already. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. Nice teamwork there, humans. <laughs> But since you took so long to beat Aya, we will have to actually try and uh, attack the human village next time on Let's Play Single Cocoon Sokyo. This was NCS, and farewell for now! <laughs>